Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and I'm blue dabba dee dabba die because Disney, yeah, they've just dropped the first trailer for Avatar 2. The original released all the way back in 2009, and the several sequels that were getting on the film have remained a closely guarded secret since then. The movie was a box office phenomenon that's pretty much remained as the highest grossing film of all time for the 13 years since its release. Avengers Endgame managed to snatch the crown back from it, only for the inevitable to happen, and once more it regained its spot at the top. However, there hasn't really been that much hype for the sequels, and I have to admit that I wasn't really that interested. I think I'd probably only seen the first movie at the cinema when it released, and then maybe watched it once more at home. I always remembered it being kind of mid with a heavy reliance on 3D that lost its appeal once you removed that. However, I actually went back at the weekend and rewatched the film, and I have to say that I was wrong, and it definitely stands on its own two feet even without the technology behind it. The movie really captivated me and wowed me throughout without needing to strap on massive glasses onto my already massive glasses. Now I'm guessing a lot of you were in the same boat as me where you hadn't watched the movie since its release so if you need a quick catch up then the next part of the video is for you. I've left time codes below if you already know it and want to skip to the trailer stuff but we start off in the far distant future of 2154. The world is almost a barren wasteland due to humanity using up all of Earth's natural resources and it now looks like a night out in Glasgow. Early on we meet Jake Sully, an ex-marine who was left paralysed after a combat mission in Venezuela went awry. Jake's brother was part of the Avatar program, which allowed someone to control a host body through their consciousness so that humans could interact with the locals on any planet they landed on by looking like them. However, Jake's brother died and due to the Avatars taking genetic material from the person piloting them, they needed a match which came in the form of Jake, his twin brother's twin brother. Keep up, yeah? Anyway, along with the Resources Development Administration, or RDA for short, they headed out to the planet Pandora, attempting to obtain a special element called Unobtainium, which, yeah, I forgot it was called that, but attempting to obtain a special element called Unobtainium, Jake, his friend Norm, and Dr. Grace attempted to integrate with the locals. On their first day in the wild, Jake was attacked by a beast called the Thanatar, and after he got lost in the jungle, he came across Natiri, who saved his life. Natiri was part of the Navi, who Jake was trying to integrate with, and though she was initially going to kill him, she ended up staying her hand after an omen from her god Iwa landed on her arrow. The Navi are very spiritual, and they believe that all life exists in an ecosystem where life is born, someone lives, and they go back to the ground to be reprocessed so that more life can come from them. Typical stuff that you tell a girl at college you fancy because you've seen her reading a book on candles once. Book on candles, anyway. After taking him before her tribe, Natiri was ordered to teach Jake their ways, and after training for three months, the pair fell in love. Now this group of Navi lived inside a giant tree which had a huge pile of unobtainium below it, and Jake was ordered to integrate with the Navi and convince them to lose. Was, unobtainium. <laughs> However, Jake, Grace, I'm being serious. However, Jake, Grace, and Norm all knew they'd never abandon it because of their connection to nature, and when the RDA learned of this, they launched an attack on Home Tree. They ended up destroying it, and after Jake, Grace, and Norm tried to warn the Navi, they were arrested and held as traitors, like you, when you go watch a video from another channel. I know what you've been doing, I know you've been watching Looper. Anyway, with help from a pilot named Trudy, they escaped, but sadly, Grace was shot and killed by the RDA security leader called Colonel Miles. In order to show that he was truly one of them now, Jake managed to mind meld with a giant winged beast known as a Turok that only the legendary ancestors of the tribe had managed to tame. After finding the rest of the Navi at their sacred home, the Tree of Souls, they went out and gathered other tribes from the planet in order to have one final stand against the RDA. Attacking from the skies and ground, the Navi managed to push them into a retreat, and Jake went head to head with the Colonel. However, his real body was damaged in the battle, and after sending the humans packing, he ended up transferring his consciousness through the Tree of Souls into his avatar, which ended the film. Now as for the Way of Water trailer, we open with the Flux Vortex and a group of the Navi running up routes that connect the floating platforms. In case you don't know, this area features a gravitational anomaly at it, and this was where the final battle took place in the first film. Due to the gravity being off kilter, it messed with the instruments used by the humans, and thus they were unable to utilise their radar. This explains later on why the avatars being used by the humans might ride on the native beasts of the planet, instead of remaining in their ships whilst fighting the Navi. We do see more gravitational anomalies near the ocean areas, so that makes a lot of sense to me. Now at the front, you might also notice a human who pops up later in the trailer in the jungle. He ends up being pretty close to the Navi by the looks of it, and according to the wiki for the film, this is a character known as Javier Socorro. 
Though the RDA ended up fleeing the planet in the first film, there were clearly some humans left behind and from what we know in the movie, Javier was born on Pandora. He is going to be rescued and adopted by Jake and Atiri, who have several other children. We catch her pregnant in the first look and they're going to have three kids called Netayam, Loak and Tuk Tuktire. M moving on, now the first two of these are sons and the last one is a daughter. This is who I believe we see skipping along with Javier at the start, but it is a bit difficult to make out exactly who they are. We then cut to Natiri moving through the jungle with the shadow of leaves brushing past her face. Now I know this film is kind of getting dunked on for having quote unquote PS2 graphics, but I think it looks really good. Actually, watch this trailer for the first time before seeing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and to me it looks stunning on the big screen. Now Cameron initially just announced this movie and one more sequel, however he's gone on to announce several more movies on top of this one, so like it or not, you're going to be getting lots of Avatar films. Now the main reason for the hold up in the second one's development was because that motion capture technology simply didn't work underwater. However, Cameron and Cove spent the last decade trying to develop the tech so that they can do it and apparently they managed to find a way to bring this into the film. The whole movie will be centered around the Navi trying to find a new home and looking at the cast list, we know that there will be several diver characters. This includes Ronal, who will be played by Kate Winslet. According to the wiki on the film, Ronald is a pivotal character and not only did Winslet have to learn motion capture for the movie, she also had to learn free diving. Apparently Winslet managed to hold her breath for 7 minutes, which is a new world record for any scene shot underwater. Take that Tom Cruise, you're bloody furious aren't you? Now on top of that there are two actors whose characters seemingly died in the first film. Cameron has stated that Sigourney Weaver will be returning, however she will be playing a new character rather than being Dr. Grace. I kinda have a feeling that she might be the voice of Awa as Grace's character went into the tree when trying to transfer between her body and her avatar. There's also Stephen Lang who's coming back, however his character was killed at the end of the movie by Natiri. Cameron stated that he wouldn't exactly say how they're bringing him back, but it is a science fiction story and that it'll tie in with that. The premise of the franchise in general is that humans have found a way to create bodies that they can plant their minds into, so I think they might end up resurrecting the character through the use of cloning. Hell, the version of Colonel Miles that we saw in the first film might have even been an avatar himself, and who knows, Miles might have been in his own pod controlling himself from the planet. Now Cameron also said that his character will evolve into a really unexpected place across the upcoming films, and that though he will predominantly be an antagonist, we might even start to see things from the Navi's point of view. If he is a clone of something that's just being used by the RDA to conquer worlds, he'll be pretty stone cold, but that kinship with nature might open up his eyes to another side of life. Now another interesting rumour floating around about the film is that they've managed to do not only underwater motion capture, but also 3D without the glasses. Remember your Nintendo 3DS? Well, it's that. It's that but in a cinema, yeah, apparently. Which will be mental. It'll be, it'll be bloody mental, won't it? Now I think a lot of the first film's success was down to revolutionising 3D and though Hollywood ran it into the ground, doing it this way would be absolutely incredible. Now in the trailer they're clearly playing up there's going to be way too much water to the point IGN about to give this movie a 6. We catch them flying over the ocean to trees that have their roots pushing up so that they don't drown and gorgeous beaches. There's also a lot of sea life such as giant gentle whales and ones that resemble stingrays. Really nice looking imagery that of course mirrors our own world and the divers in it. Also does anyone think the trailer song sounds like Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift? Say you'll remember me, standing in a nice dress, staring at the sunset. No, just me. Now, the free diver we see in this looks like they might be wearing a t-shirt, so this could be similar to Grace in the first film, and it might actually be a human in an avatar. It looks like the humans are still using the avatar strategy to blend in with the locals, as we see them constructing, or perhaps repairing a base. Hell's Gate was abandoned in the first film, but they might be back at the outpost, as there's so much stuff there. There's a mech also walking along, as well as two Avatar Navi. Now I'm not 100% sure who this is, but Vin Diesel has been cast in an undisclosed role, and it looks like Javier and the rest of Jake's kids end up coming across them in the wilderness. This trailer is very much about family, and who better to have in the movie. Now, they might have been sent in to broker peace, though they do look like they're part of the military. Goddamn guys, they just won that unobtainium. Now we then get a shot of the water beast that the characters will be riding, and similar to the mountain banshees, they mind meld with them. There are more gravitational anomalies shown and what looks like an attack on the human base led by Javier. The human avatar looks pretty annoyed by this and we later see it flooding, making me think that they've also tried to set up shop in the oceans of the planet Pandora. 
We later see both the Navi and humans readying themselves for a water battle, so I'm guessing that's what's going to happen towards the end of the film. They aren't really giving much away, and it definitely feels like one of those trailers that could be misleading on purpose. Lots of beautiful visuals though, and I am interested to see the fight between the humans on the Navi side, whilst we also have the humans disguised as the Navi fighting against them. Anyway, that's a trailer, a recap, and some tidbits about the film. I'm really excited to watch it, and though I've been kind of met on the franchise for over 10 years now, re-watching it this week did make me appreciate why it's done so well. I can't wait to see the movie when it releases at the end of the year, and this trailer really was a blast. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll now pass it over to you. Are you excited for the film? How do you think it'll do? And what are you up to this weekend? Let me know below. And just to let you know, we're running a competition right now and giving away three copies of Spider-Man No Way Home on the 15th of May. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the teaser. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners are the last one on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want some else to watch, then make sure you check out one of our videos linked on screen right now, which is perfect for you. If not, get the hell out of here, I'll see you on the next one. Take care, peace.